Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist chemistry video looking at the air pollutants produced by the combustion of fuels. So, the more observant amongst you will notice that I've drawn a cartoon character today. This is Pat Pending from the cartoon known as Wacky Races, a wonderful old cartoon in the UK about goofy racers building amazing contraptions and racing each other in wacky adventures. Um, obviously, I was drawn, even as a child, towards the scientist character. Clearly, I was destined to be a science teacher in the future based on my preference for cartoon characters as a child. Um, but here, more importantly, he represents a hydrocarbon combusting uh, vehicle. Okay, so he is driving a vehicle powered by either petrol or diesel, and that will produce a variant number of air pollutants. And we need to understand about the impact of those air pollutants, what they can do to the environment, and what they can do to our health. And I'm going to explain about those now. Various air pollutants and their impacts on the environment and upon our health. So by far the most topical and relevant gas to start with is carbon dioxide gas, or CO2. Uh, this is produced by the complete combustion of hydrocarbon fuels in a good supply of oxygen, a sufficient supply of excess oxygen in the air surrounding the fuel itself. Um, and the key thing about carbon dioxide is it is the most prevalent greenhouse gas in our atmosphere. Therefore, it's contributing heavily to global warming and the raising of average global temperatures, which is causing a myriad of environmental concerns, including uh, things like uh, rising sea levels due to the melting of sea ice and various other climatic impacts. However, if Pat Pending's engine wasn't quite as efficient as he hoped, maybe he'd have some incomplete combustion taking place as well. Incomplete combustion is when hydrocarbon fuels burn or combust in an insufficient supply of oxygen, not enough oxygen for the reaction to go to completion. And in the process, it's possible that reaction can generate not carbon dioxide, but carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is also a greenhouse gas and would also contribute to global warming, but more pressingly, it is a highly toxic gas. Now, carbon monoxide is an incredibly insidious substance. It has no flavor, no scent. It is invisible. Uh, it has no color, and yet it is highly toxic to human beings. It's toxic because it binds strongly, irreversibly, to our red blood cells hemoglobin, and therefore it reduces the red blood cells' ability or capacity to carry oxygen around our bodies to supply our cells of oxygen for respiration. And so the body's functions begin to shut down. Uh, so common symptoms with carbon monoxide poisoning include headaches, nausea, um, drowsiness, and eventually loss of consciousness and even death. And that's why carbon monoxide is so insidious as a toxin. The symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning could easily be misconstrued as fatigue or just a mild flu-like symptom. And the person would go to sleep, still surrounded by carbon monoxide gas, and then unfortunately never wake up again. So it is an incredibly dangerous gas to be exposed to for a prolonged period of time. Uh, you can often notice someone is suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning because uh, when carbon monoxide binds the hemoglobin and the, the complex, the iron complex inside hemoglobin, it can create a pinkish hue. So if someone has a pink hue to their cheeks and is feeling very unwell, possibly they could be suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. Another possible product of the incomplete combustion of hydrocarbon fuels in insufficient oxygen are carbon particulates, effectively just carbon. And I can show you their formation really simply. If I take my scented candle from the kitchen and I smother the flame with a metal implement like a spoon for just a little while, there you go, really reducing its access to oxygen for a little while and I turn the spoon over you'll see a lot of black soot has now built up on the spoon's surface all that black soot that's a good example of uh, carbon particulates building up on the surface of the spoon okay uh, insufficient oxygen creating incomplete combustion there um, and again carbon particulates not very good for the environment and also not very good for our health either so um, at low levels carbon particulates can form smog just think of pictures of London in the 1950s or of modern pictures of Beijing and other um, Chinese super cities and that low level smog hanging around the city um, skyscrapers. Um, so that has some negative environmental uh, implications. That smog will actually reflect solar radiation from the sun back out into space, causing an effect known as global dimming. Now, you might think that's quite a good thing, because if we want to combat global warming, maybe global dimming could be a good counteractive process. But unfortunately, it is totally random in terms of when it's happening, and it's not ubiquitous across the entire planet. Um, it's just creating unpredictable um, 
fluctuations in global temperatures, which is not good in terms of uh, seasonal weather patterns and seasonal uh, um, temperature changes. So it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a beneficial thing. It's definitely a negative uh, impact. Also, carbon particulates, when breathed in uh, by humans, can exacerbate uh, respiratory disorders like asthma and, and lead to other respiratory disease states. So not a good thing to be inhaling or breathing in regularly um, and causing some major health concerns uh, for human uh, kind across the planet. So they're not good things at all. Just before we tackle the acidic air pollutants, I just want to say if you find this video useful, please think about giving it a like. You could subscribe to the channel. You could even ring the bell, get notified about this content. I do put up videos on a weekly basis and your support is hugely appreciated and really helps motivate me to keep making content on that weekly basis. You could even share this video or other videos on the channel with friends studying chemistry to help them along too. That would be hugely appreciated as well. Um, and thanks, as always. Let's carry on and look at these acidic air pollutants now. It's possible that hydrocarbon fuels, like petrol and diesel, can contain sulfur impurities. Now, if we burn fuels that contain sulfur-based impurities, then we're also burning the sulfur in those sulfur impurities. And when we burn sulfur in oxygen, we form the gas sulfur dioxide, SO2. That SO2 gas will rise up through our atmosphere, and then it will interact and react with water molecules found in clouds to form a very dilute form of sulfuric acid known as sulfuric 4 acid based on the oxidation state of the sulfur in the molecule itself. Now that sulfuric 4 acid can then oxidize in more oxygen, react with other oxygen molecules around it to form sulfuric 6 acid. Now that is exactly the same acid as you use in science lab up and down the country and around the world. That is the dilute sulfuric acid you would use in your science experiments. Um, now, if that's falling to the ground, that's going to be classified as acid rain. And that acid rain has many negative impacts. That could include corroding um, limestone buildings. That can include uh, damaging uh, the leaves of plants and leaching nutrients from the soils around plants. That could include acidifying lakes and streams and closed bodies of water and therefore killing aquatic life. So acid rain is a serious problem. Also, sulfur dioxide has been linked to respiratory disorders, including bronchitis, and therefore it has negative impacts on human health as well. Now, the last air pollutant is a little bit more interesting because it isn't formed directly via combustion reactions themselves. Instead, it is formed via the high temperatures generated by the combustion reactions. So in those high temperature situations, for example, inside internal combustion engines, nitrogen and oxygen from the air will actually react together to form nitrogen oxides. That could be nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide. These nitrogen oxide gases will rise up through our atmosphere and react with water molecules found in clouds to form dilute nitric acid. That will then fall in the form of acid rain and have very similar implications to the acid rain we were talking about earlier linked to sulfur dioxide. That is corroding limestone buildings. That is um, damaging leaves of crops, that is um, acidifying soil and reducing crop yields, that is um, leaching nutrients from soil, and that is acidifying lakes and streams and killing aquatic life. Also, it is again linked to respiratory disorders um, and therefore has negative impacts on human health as well. So anything we can do to cut down the production of gases like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, we should do. Okay, ladies and gents, that wraps up this video on air pollutants. I hope it was useful to you and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, my only other piece of advice is go away now and watch some wacky races. You'll thank yourself later. It is fabulous. As always, thank you so much for listening. I hugely appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you in the next Alchemist chemistry video. Take care. Bye now.